Leanne McAdoo reporting for InfoWars.com. I'm here in St. Louis, Missouri. As you can see, it's a very rainy day. I'm standing just outside of the radioactive West Lake landfill. It's located in a densely populated suburb of St. Louis. 50,000 tons of highly radiotoxic, uncontained nuclear waste lies just beyond that fence. It's St. Louis's nuclear legacy, remnants from the Cold War. But if that wasn't bad enough, there is a simmering underground fire in an adjacent landfill just about a thousand feet away. And that fire is creeping ever closer every single day to the nuclear waste. Of course, if the fire reaches the nuclear landfill, that has the possibility to release a toxic plume of radioactive smoke into the air, threatening the residents here in St. Louis. Those residents are growing increasingly concerned. An evacuation plan was just sent home uh, with school children, warning parents what to do in the event that one of these radioactive plumes is released. That includes sheltering in place or evacuating the area entirely. We're going to be here for the next few days covering this state of emergency, as well as the EPA's response uh, to what they're going to be doing with this nuclear waste. We're going to be interviewing some families who are victims of some of the secret dumping of this uranium. We're going to get into the background of this company that did a lot of this secret dumping. And by the way, the Manhattan Project, the remnants from the Manhattan Project, they're not just localized to St. Louis. They're actually dumped in more than 24 states in the United States. So this could be happening in your backyard. Your family could be suffering cancer clusters throughout the generations like they're seeing here in St. Louis. So stay tuned to InfoWars.com for more reports. Leanne McAdoo reporting for InfoWars.com. I'm here with some breaking news. Once again, standing in front of the radioactive Westlake landfill. I just got a phone call from Dawn Chapman. She's the founder of Just Moms STL as well as St. Louis Radwaste Legacy.com. She called to let us know that right now the landfill is experiencing a leachate leak. It's huge. Dawn, what's going on? There's 10 to 11,000 gallons of leachate leaking right now back in the field down there. Leachate is very toxic. It's from the landfill. It's created from the burning Superfund materials and garbage that are occurring right next to you. It's, it, we understand that a force main broke and the leachate 10, again, 10 to 11,000 gallons of it leaked. That's what you're smelling right now. You're smelling the actual uh, right. odors and emissions from that leachate. Right, and we're not gonna be able to stay here too long because I'm literally feeling burning sensation in my chest. So this leachate, uh, you call it, d uh, dump, what it like dump juice basically, uh, but this is the radioactive material that's here in this landfill now leak 10,000 gallons leaking here at the bottom of this hill. We don't know if it's radioactive or not. I'm really hoping that they're going to test it down there. It looks like Department of Natural Resources is. But what we know for certain is that, again, the leachate has leaked about 10 to 11,000 gallons, and it's down there in a field. We can't get to it. That's private property. We're on a public street right now. We see uh, Metropolitan Sewer District right now out here. They're trying to suck it up. They're trying to suck as much of it can, as they can get in these, and I'm really hoping that they do test it. But this is life every day here. You never know. You're in the middle of dinner when something like this is going to happen, and you can smell it. I have a horrible headache. I know your eyes look like they're, they're watering right now. Yeah, right. I mean, imagine living next to this. Right. And this is what you've been trying to get the city to understand, that this is happening, and that they put out that worst-case scenario of three to six months and it could happen any day. It could happen today. Right. You know, the worst case scenario is the fire meets the waste, but they forget that this kind of stuff happens all the time at this landfill. You know, you a massive leak in a field next to a creek down there. This is, this is an out of control site. What's happening down there is not controlled. The company, the EPA, they say this is a controlled site. I beg to differ. Look at what's happening right there. All right, Leanne Mackett reporting for InfoWars.com. We're going to wrap up here and follow up. We're going to just get as much information as we can right now. But again, this is breaking right now. The leachate is leaking out of the Westlake landfill uh, here. Leanne Mackett reporting for InfoWars.com. Stay tuned to InfoWars.com for more reports. Get out of here. Get out of here so you're not sick. Get out of here so you're not sick. We've already been exposed.
There is growing fear in the sub suburban <laughs> St. Louis community over a potential threat buried in the ground. A local landfill contained nuclear waste left over from the Cold War. The radioactive material was dumped there illegally in the 1970s. There's also a hot spot burning underground in a second landfill about four football fields away. Renita Nyer is outside the Westlake landfill in Bridgetown, Missouri, where neighbors are fed up. Benita, good morning. Good morning. Well, one of the landfills that you mentioned, the one that contains the waste, was designated a Superfund site in 1990, meaning the federal government would fast track its cleanup. Now, 25 years later, the waste is still there and there is another potential threat. You can't 100% guarantee that we're okay. Hundreds of angry people demanded answers last night from federal officials. I'm scared. This is scary. We don't go outside. We don't open our windows. This is the source of their anger and frustration. Two landfills that abut one another in North St. Louis County. One houses two areas of illegally disposed nuclear residue named a Superfund cleanup site in 1990. The other landfill has an underground fire, a slow burn, which has been smoldering for five years. It's thought to be about a thousand feet from the radioactive material, but no one knows for sure what will happen if the fire comes into contact with the waste. I don't know why they ignored it for so long. I really don't. That's probably about accurate. Don Chapman lives less than two miles from the landfills and helps start a citizen activist group to educate her neighbors. What is the most frustrating thing for you as a resident? I cannot believe that somebody and anybody in their right mind would think that you can leave the world's oldest nuclear weapons waste sitting on the surface of a landfill for over 40 years and there not be a consequence to that. St. Louis's nuclear legacy dates to World War II, when uranium was processed here for America's first nuclear weapons. The sites where the leftover waste was stored have been clean, but some low-level radiation has moved into neighborhoods. Missouri's attorney general is suing the landfill's owner, Republic Services. He says the company mishandled the fire, and his experts say the underground burn could conceivably hit the material in three to six months. The Environmental Protection Agency and Republic strongly deny those reports, and the company has spent millions of dollars to contain the burn and control the odors. Talk Mark Haig is an acting regional administrator the for the EPA. Portion. The testing we're doing now, or about to embark on with the additional samples we're collecting, I think will give the public additional information to uh, support what we've been saying. The EPA says they will decide whether to install a barrier between the two landfills by the end of the year. Don Chapman fears that solution will be too late. No barrier will be allowed to be put in by this community if you cannot 100% guarantee our safety without it. The underground fire is not the only concern. This past weekend, a grass fire erupted about 75 yards away from that radioactive waste. Gail, in addition to all of those problems, this area is also very close to an earthquake fault line. Oh boy, all right. Thank you, Vanita, very much. Ha, ha, ha.